Hey guys, what's going on? DuffKing56 here, back to continue our Let's Play of Yakuza Kiwami. Welcome, welcome back. I'm very excited to be bringing you this episode today because the weather has cleared and I am back to play. What am I here to play? Well, let me tell you, the first thing that we are going to do is head straight to Club Sega. We're going to go to the arcade for a little bit of fun today. And then after that, if we clear things with much expediency... We'll probably head up to the Coliseum, but my thoughts are that I will probably not have time for the Coliseum personally this episode. So, if you want to see some Coliseum grind, then you probably should tune in to tomorrow's episode. However, today, like I said, we've got some stuff to do with the RK. We've got some Mezu King to play. We've got some on top of the Mezu King. Oh, okay. Well, apparently we have fights to be in as well. But on top of the Mezu King to play, we have some Crane game to master. And on top of that, we also have a rousing bit of arcade games to play, because I haven't showed you any of the arcade games that you could play in this game. So that'll be very interesting. Also, I don't think I've ever seen a tie like that before, especially since I knocked him out. So that's very interesting to me. Oh, we got him doubled there. Very nice. Beautiful. What are you going to do about it? Actually, I actually want to use my heat move here to see which one we get. Oh, the elbow block to break his fist, I guess, like all of the fingers in his hand. That's insane. Very nice hits, though. I will take that fight. That's a good little warm-up for this episode. Can't have an episode without fights. I mean, what is this, like a Yakuza game or something? But oh, seriously, I'm very, very happy to have the opportunity to be playing some more of this stuff. So let's first see if we can get... Ooh, 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 ooh. We have the Axolotl family to get here, but we don't have the father, which kind of sucks. So that means we only have two prizes out of the available three that we have to win here. So we're going to have to ask the good owner here to change things up a bit for us once we get both the mother and the son Axolotls. It's also our fifth prize one, so we should be getting a CP for this, as you can see. Perfectly timed. Let's see what we can do about getting this other guy here. If not, if we miss this one, we can always go for the third, or sorry, the middle one on the left-hand side here. But I have a feeling this will be just fine, because we'll get him by his big head. I'll be very happy about that. Perfect. Okay, so that's two out of the three that we need to get. We can quit here and then just ask him to see if we can get our proper axolotl family. The father axolotl, I believe. Those guys are actually really cute too. You can catch them when you're fishing in Yakuza 0. I don't think there's any fishing in this game, which is kind of sad, but it is what it is. Let's see if we got the proper family here. No, it doesn't look like it. Just birds. Which, as much as I like birds, this is uh, unacceptable for our purposes here. We got to be able to get this father to get these toys to his daughter so he can get some money. Because he's been compensating us pretty fairly for this kind of stuff. So, oh yes, we got a father one. Perfect. Thank you very much. I actually really like the setup of this one, because it's uh, sloped downward, so we could probably win multiples if we, like, knocked one hard enough into the other. Actually, I don't think this is far enough over to the right. So it's very... Oh, no, I think we just got it. Nice. Okay, well, we, we massaged him forward a little bit there, which is... Half the battle, I suppose? I don't know. Probably like three quarters of the battle, because he's in a better position now that he's slightly turned. Because we could probably get a better grip on his head. Because that's how we're kind of been grabbing them. We've been grabbing them under the head by the neck. So another grip. And it looks like we have some sort of grab positioning on him. So I'm very happy to say that we've won the complete axolotl family. And a congratulations is definitely needed for us here, because now we can give away these toys to this poor father. I'm glad you will repay us immensely. How immensely is immensely? Of course we'll give you the set. We don't really need these toys right now. We don't have anyone to give them to, because Haruka is unavailable. But let's see. What do we got here? Oh, 30k. I'll take that for sure. I wonder if we will be able to do one more for him because it doesn't seem like it's over yet so in the meantime let's play some mezu king Ooh, do we have a challenger oh majima oh he wants to play mezu king with us 
Oh my. Now this is definitely something that I was not expecting here, so I'm very happy to possibly beat Majima in a Mezu King game. Very interesting indeed. Oh, yes, yeah, see, we are the pure ones. We are the naive ones. So it looks like he wants us to go around. I guarantee his cards are going to be, like, really good, too. I'm not even going to lie. I'm, I'm having a feeling here. So let's see what we can do about getting a nice card in here. See how good we have some of these ladies. So we have a lot of HP and low attack power on some of these. The cicada's looking pretty good with those 70s. And the Mantis has a pretty good 90 there, but I want someone who's a little bit more on the balanced side of things. Although the Rhino Beetle is pretty good, I'm kind of leaning towards the Cicada right now. So let's pick the Cicada, just for fun. Now let's see here. We want super compatible everything for everybody, it looks like. So let's see here. 2x circle is very compatible, so this would be pretty good for a Technique 50. So we use that one for this one. We got a single circle for the scissors. Okay, and then that one for the paper. Okay. I'd say that's about as good as we can get. We need to get some more cards, but... I'd say this is an okay start for our Mezu King game here. My gosh, this is just absolutely ridiculous. I love my bug girls, apparently. There we go, we got Max on two attacks, and then Scissors is the only one lacking. And our super attack seems to be our red attack. So that's very interesting. Here's Majima's uh, walking flower mantis girl. Okay, so he is jiving with the elbow drop as his special attack. It looks like- oh no, his scissors, okay. Thankfully our special attack beats his technically, so I'd be kind of happy about that. And by strength, I, I, I guess I meant HP. Let's go with our super attack to start here. Of course, it's going to be the one that makes us lose. Ooh, okay. So that is a little bit on the rougher hand side for us there. Let's see. We have a bunch of things to pick here if we really want to. He did open up with a paper. So I'm going to open up with a paper. Perfect. And we get to throw things around on him here. And this is Tomoe Nage. That was a pretty good leg drop, if I do say so myself. That's actually a heat move that Kiryu has in the other game here. I'm guessing he's going to go with the scissors. Let's try to tie him with the scissors. Ooh, we even beat him with the scissors. Perfect. An Omni Choke. Ooh, okay. It doesn't seem like... Oh, okay. I guess it did a little bit. Ooh. Okay. So we got three, four attacks out of that, and it worked. That is very good for us there. So we did paper there. Obviously, it's all kind of like a crapshoot for us here. I'm guessing he's going to go scissors. Oh, perfect. We just swept the shit out of Majima. Ooh. Okay. Oh my gosh. All right. Electrifying indeed, and a win for the cicada. So you can consider this a very, very nice win. And we got another proverb to open up a can of worms. <laughs> to cause trouble for other people and to leave the cans unopened. So we don't want to be opening up a can of worms here. But we su successfully, excuse me, defeated Majima and Mezuking. So I do have to say that is a very good job for me. Hats off for a win in rock, paper, scissors against the professional rock, paper, scissors Majima. But he wants to play us again? I mean, I, I certainly don't mind that. <laughs> it's kind of funny how he just skulks off into the corner. He's going to want to increase his deck, but oh, we got Majima Everywhere experience for that. I am a happy man. And the essence of escape. Let's go check what that means. Really quick here, of course. So let's check out the essence of escape here. Aha! Break free from a hold and retaliate through the sheer force of will. Okay, so that is a Dragon of Dojima skill purely. Nothing else here. Let's see if we can help him out here. What does he want this time? Does he want the family of chickadees? Because they're really cute. What did she ask for, though? The Jumbo Chestnut. The stuffed animal of a blue squirrel, and it's jumbo-sized. Okay. So we can get the Jumbo Chestnut to this guy easily. We can just cycle this 
crane game to best get the blue monkey. And I believe there's also a yellow one and a pink one. But we have to get the jumbo one, so it's huge. So if there's a size difference, we have to get the bigger one. But we also have to rotate the prizes and the UFO catcher until we actually get what we want here. So perhaps we will be lucky enough to get what we want the first time. Nope, that is incorrect. It's kind of annoying that we have to turn around to see it every time, but this is how things go in the world of prize catcher. I'm glad he's so agreeable in uh, changing these for us. I'm kind of wondering if these squirrels we even get here. Maybe we get it at the other arcade, but... I don't want to take the chance of running across town only to have somebody tell me that I'm stupid for not just switching it enough times. Did we get it? Okay, good. Looks like we got some jumbo blue squirrels here, so... Let's insert our coin and then just see what we can do about getting every size because we want to get all the unique prizes. And of course, we'll be able to knock like everybody over, which is probably good and bad for our purposes here. Clearly, this isn't the Jumbo one, as you know. That's okay. It's just a regular chestnut, and that's just fine. I wonder if... Mm, we're probably gonna have a tough time getting the forward one here, so let's just get the backward one. The back one, I should say. We can throw this guy, and then we'll have exactly what we need. Oh, he's falling! Okay, good. Ooh, we almost knocked the other toy down, too. There we go, Jumbo Chestnut is one for us. And since we have the time, let's just get the one in the back here, just for fun. We, we need to flex our UFO catcher muscles here a little bit, don't you think? These guys are all the easier prizes, though. There's definitely more difficult prizes. We have them by the badge. Okay, that's fine. We totally messed up there, guys. I'm very sorry. It's okay, though. Oh, whoopsies. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, well. Looks like I paid for nothing. That's okay, though. Let's have this guy reward us for the Jumbo Chestnut. I kind of feel weird taking money from this guy, because he's this bad at the claw game, but... You know, sometimes we just have to make our money. So let's give him the Jumbo Chestnut. See how much he's going to give. I'm going to guess 50 grand. Let's see here. Yep, okay, perfect. Wow, he's going to... He needs more? That's absolutely unbelievable to me. I want to try the photo booth eventually too, but I also want to do another Mezzaking with the professor here. Let's battle with somebody. Maybe not necessarily Majima, but... Aha! Substory 71, our first rival. Well, this will be very interesting. Tomohiro. Is it going to be a kid? Oh, perfect. This guy thinks we're not going to be very good. Well, that's not nice. Super finishing attack, the Kestrel Punch. It'd be kind of interesting if we got cards from beating certain rivals. Although... I have a feeling we might. I don't actually know ahead of time, but... That would be kind of cool, don't you think? Okay. Oh no, I was right about HP being strength. HP is just it's just seemingly equal to strength, I guess. Which is fine. Okay. Let's just upgrade these as best as we can. We only got a four on this one. We, like I said, we need better upgrade cards, but that's okay. Pretty good looking lineup here. With a huge health, huge strength character. Tornado back fist. Very much like our Mezzakin character here. At least she's not doing any crazy dances here. So what's our special attack? It is going to be the cartwheel kick. And we've maxed everything else with double circle, so that is good for me. Oh my god, she's really cool looking. I like the color blue on her. The damsel fly. Okay, so here's her Kestrel Punch. Okay. This should be a very interesting fight here. Let's see what we can do, boys and girls and everybody in between. Let's start out with a rock. We want to start, we just start out with a more powerful attack here. Of course we tied. Most unfortunate here. Let's do rock again, just for fun. Oh, this guy really wants to use this special attack here. Alright, this guy wants to play some chicken. I'm fine with playing chicken. I'll pick rock again. Go at me, brother. <laughs> Are we gonna tie? I feel like the game's just baiting me to take paper. Honestly. It's making me a little bit nervous to think about picking anything else at this point. Okay. Alright, I see you. Let's just keep tying, man. We'll take paper when we know it's gonna be like the automatic win at the end here. 
because our paper is a rather low-powered attack. What a ridiculous rival fight. Although he is a child, technically, so it's something we have to think about as we go along here. It'd be kind of... I almost wonder what a double KO would be like. But here I'm actually going to take paper because I think this is probably within the realm of us winning. As you can see, all of our attacks are highlighted here, so it seems like we're going to get a pretty good powered attack here. Perfect. It did work. And that is a win for the Devil's Flower Mantis. The, the damselfly is messed. And here we go. We got the same proverb. That's kind of sad, actually. But that's okay. Beggars can't be choosers, you know, when you're playing Mezzaking. But there we go. Unfortunately, he lost, but he did become predictable. <laughs> oh, there we go. Kiryu imparting some knowledge here. Very nice indeed. See, the professor knows. The professor is a smart man as well. We could sit here and grind Mezking all day, though. Mezking is so much fun. It's a good sub story, though. Very easy. Yeah, see? He will get even better in no time. Congratulations to us. But at least we know that some players do have tendencies and it's not completely random. So that's cool for us. The game does have true depth, that's for sure. You're welcome, Tomohiro. I would love to battle you again. But there you are. First rival, substory 71, is complete. We definitely are fired up, and that's okay for us. We didn't get any reward for it, really, it looks like. Oh, okay. We got the giant swing here, which is a nice-looking technique. It's a paper double circle, so that would be really good, with a pretty good strength. And I do like my cards. So let's see if the man is over here again. It doesn't look like it. Probably only because... Oh, okay. Before we do anything, let's try to grab these guys because they look unique. Uh, we never know if we would need them for the sub story or not, so we might as well take our time here and try to win these cool cat looking prizes. Oh, he's so close, which is good. I wonder if we can double him up with the bird from Yakuza 0. I forgot the name of that specific mascot, so my apologies. Let's see what we can do about getting both of them here. Probably shouldn't do it this way if this is what I want, but that's okay. It'll definitely hook us into the... There we go. Perfect. <laughs> I guess that worked. What's his name again? Ka oh, Kara Kappa, that's right. Okay, now let's get this last blue guy. We'll definitely be able to get him now because he's super round and at the perfect height for our claw to grab around. So as you can see, we got this blue dude. We're just cleaning out the prize machine right now. Kyanbo. Okay, that's a pretty cool name. Good. Okay, so that's good. Let's leave and come back because we definitely want to reset the poor man for his daughter. Ooh. Oh, shit. No way, dude. We can't get him. Let him be fleeced down like that. That's really sad if that's the case. I hope we can help him against this Yakuza here. <laughs> oh boy. This guy definitely thinks that we're going to help him out in this fight or whatever. I don't think we can tell him to give you shit, honestly. It's a free country. Kamarocho, that is. Ooh, Kiryu throwing some shade. I like that. Is it really that important of a toy? Yeah, man, I'll fight you. I'll beat you two to a pulp. Dude, this, this guy has no idea what's about to hit him. I guess most people aren't, though, if you think about it. I also don't know why that guy slightly despawned. Let's just finish him off. Beautiful hit there, Kiryu. Oh, I'm loving it. So what's your problem, man? I would guarantee he's had enough. 
<laughs> All he wanted was a stuffed animal, man. Oh, wait, is there like drugs and shit in there? <laughs> is that prize loaded? That would not be very good. I doubt you'll get back at me for this. Everybody like runs away swearing revenge, but nobody ever comes up to the plate about it. Maybe the scarf is full of money or some shit. That's crazy. Oh, a locker key? That's sick. That's awesome, man. I will take that. So that's up to four keys now out of like the nine or eleven that we had remaining. So I will take that locker key. I wonder what number that locker key's from. I'm definitely going to go and open up the lockers before the end of this episode because it'd be a good little pit stop on our way up. The Crane Game 23 sub story is finished. Uh, it'd be a nice little detour on my way up towards the West Park so I can grind up the Coliseum in a little bit. So I'll take that thousand experience points any day, any day of the week. So that is a nice little finisher to what we had to do over at the arcade. So that makes me a very happy man. So now the next thing we're going to go do, of course, is the coin lockers. I mean, just got to go find those on the map because I always have a tough time remembering exactly where they are. I think it's up there in Nakamichi Alley. So I'm going to run up north for a bit here and see what we can do. Uh, <laughs> actually, you know what? Let's just fight the drunk guy. Come on, buddy. A little bit red in the face there, it seems like. I don't know what's wrong with you, buddy. But I would hate to be you. I don't know why I was feeling a little antagonistic there, but... He, se he seemed like a pretty easy target, don't you agree? Okay, oh shit, wait. Why can I never remember where these coin locker coin lockers are? It's not, like, on this row. It's not in the theater square over here. It's definitely, like, either here or right down here by Nakamichi Alley. So let's not run too far this way and actually see if I was right. This definitely doesn't look like the correct area, so I'm just not even going to worry about that right now. Oh, there they are. I don't know why... The map always confuses me. I, I, like, knew where they were. That's okay. They're easy enough to open now. So let's open up I-3 first, which is the one we got from this quest. Oh, a modified model gun. Perfect. Let's actually put away... Oh, we have it equipped, so we can't put that away. That's okay. We don't need the wood katana anymore, I don't think. Uh, Goro's beads. Okay. The last A locker, a meteor fragment. That sounds kind of cool. And the last H locker. A ruby plate. Okay, that's going to be nice and pricey here. Let's put the Kara Kappa away. Okay, so that's it. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Not bad indeed. Let's see what Goro's beads are here. The chances of evens appearing. Oh, that's kind of cool here. And a meteor fragment, which will allow us to get a small fortune, which is very nice, of course. Okay, so that looks like it's finished. I want to drop these in the item box and then head upwards towards the, whatchamacallit. Actually, I want to keep the ruby plate. Eh, we can always come back later. We'll grab the ruby plate later, but I want to head towards the pharmacy so we can stock up on healing items. It's been a while since we've bought some healing items. I, I definitely want to make a priority of crap going to the wrong place, of getting those. And then I'll probably end it. Okay, no, 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 we're in a fight. No, we'll, we'll come back later. <laughs> I think I'll just end the episode here, guys. I will see you guys in the next where we go towards the West Park to grind that Coliseum. It's probably going to be a long episode, so this has been Duffking56 with another Let's Play of Yakuza Kiwami. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great night, and peace out. Pause. Down, up, down, up.
Hey guys, what's going on? Duff King 56 here, back to continue my Let's Play of Yakuza Kiwami. Welcome, welcome back. Last episode, we spent a lot of time in the arcade. Yes, we were neating it up, even though we had to leave our house to get there, but after all, it is an arcade, so things still count for the neat status. Played some Mezu King, fought Majima, and now we're over here at the West Park. Like I said, I promised before, I wanted to grind up the Coliseum a little bit. This will probably be one of the last sort of auxiliary episodes before I hop back into the story, unless some things come to my attention a little bit later on. So enjoy it while it lasts. We'll probably be in the home stretch after we get into this part of the game. But yeah, I really want to grind out the Coliseum to get some of these portraits so I can give them to Komaki. Why is there a girl here? It's probably gonna be a sub-story. Let's see. Yep. She's an interviewer. Oh, hey. How's it going? Some bad boy vibes to us, huh? She probably thinks we are a Yakuza. Badass dad, sub-story 51. <laughs> okay. Well, she wants to do an interview on me. And we look like a cool old guy, so I suppose we could humor her for a little bit here before we hop into the Coliseum. I just love how these sub-stories keep popping up out of nowhere here. Oh my god, she just called us a DILF without even trying. Okay. Thank you very much for the compliment, I suppose, if you're in a daddy sort of mood. I could help you out. Of course, we do have a bad boy streak. She did mention that we look like we have a dark past, and she's definitely on the money with that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm still trying to get over the, the whole DILF thing. But that's okay. She okay, the bad boys of Kamarocho. We can... Definitely help her out with that. We actually know a pretty bad boy who likes to fight us all the time as well. And the hottest dilfs she can find. Well, that that's just flattering. <laughs> oh my gosh. I really want to interview with her. So we probably have to give, like, bad boy answers. So I'd be very happy in helping her out there. But let's help her out with the story. Really, honestly. We're going to get a special prize, so... Even though Kiryu's reluctantly accepting, I am happily accepting. So, I don't care if this takes a long time. That is completely okay with me. I will try my best to give the best commentary over this before. Sir Kazuma and Kiryu's 37 years old. Oh my gosh. Definitely Dilf material here. What are my priorities in life as a badass dad? Ooh, sunglasses at night. Very Adam Jensen of him, if we're talking about Deus Ex here. But seriously, what's our number one priority here? My clothes, probably. Nothing really is kind of bad, and Majima-san's kind of weird. So we're going to pick my clothes. Ah, oh, yeah, don't wear t-shirts. I like dress shirts, the kind you can button up. That's very daddy of him. I always unbutton the shirt down to my chest. Oh my god, that's... That's fantastic. <laughs> oh, yeah, see, we are right on the money with the answer to that question. I do like that. Definitely badass material. Some grandpa. Oh my gosh. This is fantastic. Okay. So the next question is... What the hell is this homeless man doing here? Bad boys and whatnot. Who's the boss? You're talking about the florist? Or the boss hobo? If the florist gets in on this, I'd be pretty happy. Who is it? Who's it gonna be? Aw oh, yeah. The Dilfiest of the Dilfs. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to say it. Oh yeah. This guy is ready to be interviewed, I guess. There's no way this guy's more of a Dilf than me. <laughs> oh my gosh. The fact that this guy is like the head of all underground intelligence in Kamurocho here. Being interviewed for a public magazine is rather funny to me. So a heroic exploit, something that a DILF would do here. Aw, oh, yeah. He was, of course, being targeted for being a DILF. Aw, oh, man. Wow, this guy is really, like... You don't want to fuck with this guy. Pretty good, though. Pretty DILF-like, I suppose. Oh, Jesus. That's very funny. Okay, so what's our best bad boy experience here? I beat up punks on a daily basis? That's okay. I don't know if it's dad-like, though. The joint for 10 years kind of sounds like it would push her away 
from being like Delphi. Uh, ran went on a rampage at a funeral. Eh, that's kind of badass, I suppose. Be the punks on a daily basis. I'm definitely leaning more towards that one. Let's see how this one goes. Oh, wait, it's the bottom answer, so it's probably not that good. Oh, yeah, okay, I suppose that could be good. Yeah, it's definitely badass, but it's kind of more bad than badass. <laughs> He is fighting back. Okay, well, I suppose that's good. So, are we more Dilfy now? Okay, that's good. What's the next question? Oh, yeah, Date's gonna get all the Dilfs in the game are gonna come here. This is fantastic. Oh, this is amazing. I really like this. I thought you I thought you pretty much got fired from the cops. Of course, the, the context of the story it doesn't exist here. But that's okay. Interviewing for a magazine, a magazine which he would be perfect for, man. He is Dilf. Material. Delf material indeed. So now that we're caught up to speed, we can definitely see how we can stack up against Mr. Date here. Oh no. Oh gosh, no. <laughs> Kiryu, come on man. You already saw what that was all about. You gotta be careful about this sort of thing. Oh, wow, okay, you think you're better than us? I see how it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very funny. Date, come on, that's just you being real shitty. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, that's that's definitely a bad guy. Kiryu's like, yep, I helped you out in that situation. Whose birthday did we forget? It's been ten years. I don't actually know about that one here. Yeah, how do we stack up? Who would make the best badass dad out of this group of three here? So let's see, ultimate dad badass boy. <laughs> this is amazing. I doubt we're gonna fight any of these guys. Okay, so whoever gives the best answer to the question, that sounds good. So we're back to the interviewing, but now it's a triple interview. Okay, let's see what we can do. We've got to be on our badass dad mind right now. Most important thing about being a bad boy. So it looks like the florist is going to answer first. Financial power. Human nature to gain more confidence as we acquire more capital. Oh, a very philosophical answer there. Money leads to confidence. Confidence makes us dandy. Oh. That's a really good answer, actually. I don't know how she's going to feel about it. Crap. But we'll see about it, honestly. We'll see what the other answers are like. Of course, Date is going to be next. Okay. More than financial power, huh? What's it going to be? Is it going to be love? We're going to get, like, the loving music here. Ooh, a loving family. Aw, oh, that's cute. Honestly, he's not the best example of that, but it's still pretty cute. <laughs> then. <laughs> well, carry you, everybody around you just dies. Oh, here we go, okay. She's gonna shoot the hell out of that question. We don't have to necessarily be married with children, okay. We can still be a daddy. Okay. Let's see what our answer is here. Going to a tanning salon every day, having less having less common sense than normal men, or I have no clue. <sighs> having less common sense than normal men would be kind of interesting. Kind of have to be like that naive daddy type. I have no clue is probably not the best answer, and going to a tanning salon every day seems just kind of shitty, so I'm going to pick the middle one here. Having less common sense than normal adults. But going overboard is no good. It's all about maintaining, maintaining a balance of like playful naivety, maybe? Oh yeah, here we go. This is top daddy material here. Oh my gosh, this is... This is amazing. This looks like she bit on this a little bit here. Oh, oh wow, we got a great answer here. 
carefree guy without money or family doesn't limit himself to societal standards. Dilf material. It looks like we have her eating out of the palm of our hand. We have to be the baddest of the daddies out of this group here. I'd give you a drum roll on the table, but it'll probably sound awful with my microphone. But it looks like Kiryu has taken the victory. We take the W and we're bringing it home. I like it, man. Badass daddy. Top of the rungs here. We're at the top of the ladder. What's our special prize, actually? An Italian shoulder bag. Oh my god. That's fantastic. I'll take it though, honestly. That was uh, better than I ever could have been. Right? Right? I think so. It's also kind of a very long sub-story. That was like a 12-minute sub-story here. But it looks like we're top daddy now that we have beaten everybody down. Even after we got out of the clink. I think we should comfort them. We have to be a nice guy here. Yeah, see, we're dandy. <laughs> Man, these guys are just not helping. Helping themselves, I should say. Oh, that's cute. Oh man, come on, man. You gotta connect with your old friend who was on the force with you. Kinda sad. I have to say, I feel bad breaking up that fight, or that fight, that little friendship budding there. But there we go, Badass Dad. Substory 51 is over. Kind of an over and done with quick one there. But 50,000 experience points is something that I would consider very welcome to my pocket right now. And I don't know why it teleported us all the way back here, but of course we were originally on our way to the Colosseum. So unfortunately we can't just go to Komaki and get some more tech for from him. It seems like the weapons dealer guy's not here anymore, which kind of sucks. I was kind of hoping for him to be there, but he's probably moved to the back of the erotic video store. Because I believe that was teased to us a tiny bit before, if I'm remembering correctly. But that's okay. I'm surprised that they don't have any sub-stories here for you or coin locker keys because there's a lot of opportunities for you to get them. Actually, I always forgot. What's on this side? Okay, it's the Coliseum. Oh, that's right. There's a casino over here. Can we walk into the casino just really quickly if you don't mind? I want to see if there's any coin locker keys on the ground. In pretty much every Yakuza game that I played, aka one of them, there was a secret item in the casino somewhere. So, I'm just going to run the route here, and I don't see anything, so it looks like I was incorrect. And that's just fine, we didn't spend a bunch of time in here, so we can just run out now and across to the Coliseum. It was kind of a long sub-story though. I don't know if I really want to spend time grinding the Coliseum now, in just the one episode. Because we've already wasted like 15 minutes of your time, not wasted, you know what I mean. We've already spent 15 minutes of our time doing that, so I will catch you guys in the next episode. We're just going to do a dedicated casino, ep or coliseum episode, so I'll see you guys next time. This has been Duffkin56 with my Yakuza Kiwami Let's Play. Have a good night, guys. We got the coliseum tomorrow. Peace out.